and thank you all the panelists for joining today to give your views on the UAE-India Healthcare Partnership webinar that is being hosted jointly by the Embassy of India, Abu Dhabi, and the Consulate General of India, Dubai, in association with the Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industries. Uh, the real antidote to epidemics is cooperation. And the best defense against pathogens is information. This is what Yuval Hariri, the well-known sociologist and historian, commented. Then he commented on the pandemic that this world is faced with. This kind of a webinar, therefore, gives us the power, the authority, and the knowledge to fight the pathogens because this disseminates information. And this kind of a webinar provides cooperation between nations who are fellow sufferers as far as this pandemic is concerned. But the UAE-India Healthcare Partnership is the pandemic that we are suffering from today, because tomorrow we will be of this pandemic. But the cooperation and collaboration which has existed over eons between the two nations will continue. We have social, we have religious, we have uh, many cooperations uh, between the two countries, but the, the most important seeing the test of time has been in the sector of healthcare. India has collaborated over the, in the healthcare scenario in the UAE, and now that the relationship between the two countries has moved into a strategic sphere, it's only natural for the government of India and the governments of UAE to collaborate, not just in the capacity of finding a solution and fighting this pandemic, but of cooperation, collaboration, innovation in the fields of healthcare so that better sustained delivery mechanisms can benefit the populations of both the nations. One can only go on in continuation of the session that was held uh, previously, but I'd just like to mention that in this session, you are going to be hearing the Consul General of India, Dr. Amun Puri. You will be hearing Dr. Praveen Gaidam, additional uh, CEO of the National Health Authority of India. You will be hearing Mr. Viren Shetty, who is the Executive Director and Group COO of Narayan Hridale. Mr. Tahir Shams, who is the MD of the Zuleika Hospital Group. Mr. Akbud Mohindin in Tumbe, of the uh, Vice, Pre uh, Vice President of the Healthcare Division of UAE. And Mr. Arun Srivastav, who is the CEO of the Dubai, uh, Dubai region of the New India Health Insurance Company. Last but not the least, apology and of the Apollo. So may I, without further Dr. Aman Puri, uh, the Consul General of India in Dubai to address us by giving the welcome address. Just to point out that Dr. Aman Puri comes from the dental sciences background and is an IFS officer of the 2003 Garden. Dr. Aman Puri, please. Thank you so much, Dr. Puri. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to join all of you here and very heartening to see such eminent panelists at the UAE India Healthcare Conference 2020. Uh, as Dr. Puri mentioned, uh, in the morning we had a session where uh, some of the representatives of the UAE government and the Indian government were joined by representatives of the private sector on both sides. Uh, especially, uh, I would say it is, it is really encouraging to see that several uh, large healthcare providers in the UAE uh, happen to have come from India and now they have built their uh, healthcare empires 
here in the UAE and other Middle Eastern countries and have also uh, started giving back in a major way to the Indian medical and healthcare sector. We had uh, ideas from several of those individuals in the morning. And if I may just uh, share with you a couple of those ideas, one of which was that uh, UAE can invest majorly in the development of the health infrastructure in India, for which there is a huge demand and a huge need. Considering our huge population in India and also the increasing purchasing power. Uh, of course, Dr. Praveen Gedam, the additional CEO of the National Health Authority of India, would be talking in detail about the Ayushman Bharat program, the uh, world's largest government funded healthcare insurance scheme. He would also be talking about the National Digital Health Mission, where I see a lot of synergies and complementarities between India and the UAE. We would, of course, uh, be hearing from uh, Mr. Virin Shetty, uh, who is actually the group CEO of Narayan Rudyale, which is one of the most admired uh, healthcare providers in India. And of course, uh, we'd be hearing the perspective uh, from the Zuleka group and the uh, Thumbe group about doing business in India as a UAE investor. The healthcare insurance aspect is a very critical part. It's a very critical element in ensuring accessible and affordable healthcare delivery to individuals. And I'm very glad that Mr. Arun Srivastava, the CEO of the New India Assurance, would be giving his perspective and sharing his insights on that aspect as well. I would just like to conclude by saying that UAE and India has had a very long civilizational ties over millennia. They were cultural, people-to-people -people bonds, which have now been transformed into a comprehensive strategic partnership since 2017. And I must say that the visit of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi in 2015 played a key role in transforming this relationship. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the UAE leadership and all UAE authorities for the exceptional support and care they have provided for all citizens living in the UAE, including the very large Indian community. Thank you so much. And over to Dr. Puri. Wonderful to have uh, the Consul General himself from the medical sciences talk so much about uh, the provision of health services and I'm quite sure that uh, we are all going to be very thankful to this initiative taken by the Embassy of India and the Consulate General of uh, Dubai because I think the healthcare has been in the focus of the entire world thanks or should that be the right word at all to the COVID crisis. Pandemics rarely come in the lifetime of individuals. They should not, but they afford an opportunity for all of us to learn from each other. And as we have seen with the increase in number of cases all across the world, but decrease in mortality, that the healthcare world is beginning to learn to cope. And this learning to cope is what is going to help civilization survive a pandemic of this, this grave, uh, a severity. May I now request Dr. Praveen Gedam, who is a career diplomat. Uh, he is also from the medical profession, having graduated in medicine and then joined the Indian Administrative Service in the year 2002. He is the additional CEO of the National Health Authority, which now has the twin Ayushman Bharat scheme across India, which is the, as I mentioned, the largest single universal healthcare scheme in the world. And now they are also going to be involved with the National Digital Health Mission. And as Dr. Amanpuri rightly pointed out, I think it is in the latter sphere that there may be huge opportunities unfolding because digital 
is a world that connects. And with UAE being a part and parcel of the healthcare system delivery, that mechanism which follows uh, very closely on what we follow here in India, I think the areas of collaboration, the areas of participation, the areas of learning from each other will increase many fold. Over to you, Dr. Praveen Gaydon. Thanks, uh, Dr. Puri, for uh, that introduction. Uh, thanks to Excellency Dr. Raman Puri, Fiki, uh, my friends and uh, counterparts from UAE and other distinguished pan panelists. As already told, the National Health Authority uh, is implementing the Ayushman Bharat, which is world's largest uh, government funded uh, health insurance scheme providing healthcare to more than 540 million people. And uh, with the success of this, uh, uh, IT played a significant role, which also uh, led to successful implementation in the country as large and as diverse as India. And at the same time, it went on generating huge amount of data. Uh, this scheme all of a sudden gave purchasing power to 540 million people for seeking uh, secondary and tertiary health care, which they were uh, doing so only in uh, public health facilities. Now they can go for treatment in private health facilities. So there is a demand shock in Indian healthcare economy from this huge population. And I think this has created an opportunity for investors to look into low cost, high quality model of providing health care to this 54 crore or 540 million people. And we are already working on uh, some uh, coming out with some models with the help of ADB uh, and some other consultants to help this investment uh, in uh, the sector, which we believe is never going to see a recession. So one point uh, of takeaway from this conference can be how to be, uh, ramp up the infrastructure, particularly in tier three and tier four cities of India in secondary and tertiary health care. The panel uh, and the guests uh, look into this particular aspect. The other part is uh, collaboration in the fields like uh, managing the quality of health care fraud and abuse control and use of the data in research. Given the success of uh, Aishman, trusted with the responsibility, the responsibility of launching another significant initiative that is National Digital Health Mission. It aims to create a digital health ecosystem connecting health nurse, public and private in India and uh, to create medical, digital medical records, digital health records for all Indians. Now, this is a big initiative. And this is another area where India and UAE can come together and collaborate for a better outcome. One such outcome can be leveraging India as a strength. Including UAE. And can we use this digital platform to provide healthcare to interested uh, individuals from UAE? And it can be a two way traffic. Can we use this digital platform so that healthcare professionals in both the countries? can provide their services through telemedicine. And probably this will require some discussion on regulations and rules, but we need to discuss this so that both the countries stand to benefit from each other. I understand uh, UAE has a significant uh, uh, healthcare profession of Indian background. I remember with my batchmates of uh, medical, uh, medical school and uh, learning from them the best practices of uae i so i, I can see this arrangement can be way the big data which we will be generating to ndhm after and uh, pmj we can also
talk about uh, interactions and sharing the best practices uh, having a good claims platform automation uh, then clinical decision support systems uh, and we uh, as the first speaker told the cooperation and information is very important in the uh, era pandemic uh, period so i think uh, this uh, uh, is, uh, interaction that we are having right now platform to move for nha uh, to dha through cg uh, we look forward for uh, institutionalizing this particular arrangement between the two friendly nations and uh, take forward uh, this initiative uh, for the benefit of citizens uh, of both the country i thank uh, the organizers for having me here and giving me opportunity to share my thoughts thank you once again and look forward for further thank you very much dr gedam uh, it was uh, a very inspiring to hear of the potential and the way that you are going ahead in trying to solve what has been a huge problem of providing the services to a vast population and i think the experiences learned by india over the years will benefit the entire world in providing this low cost model of care for a large population base thank you very much sir uh, may i now request uh, mr viran shetty he's an engineer by training and did his mba from stanford in the year 2012 we of course know of uh, the institution that he serves narayan hridale and he has been involved intimately as the executive director and the group ceo of that institution and he's been involved with the design and with the implementation of several of these schemes at many of the newer centers that narayan hridale has put up such as the majumdar shaw uh, cancer center the uh, centers narayan hridale has put up in ahmedabad and in jaipur it will be interesting to hear mr viran shetty talk to us an engineer and a management professional over to viran thanks thanks dr puri um thank you for inviting me to this forum and uh, it's quite timely actually i think now is when the world needs to be getting together or rather than tearing ourselves apart at the seams in the face of this onslaught and i think more than anything else the pandemic is a healthcare issue and it has proven to us that barring maybe a dozen countries in the whole world almost no country has been able to manage this adequately because we all have a barely functional health system barely functional means something that is perfectly optimized to work well when things are perfectly adequate not too many people fall sick not too many doctors leave the country not too many new diseases are discovered just enough spending on healthcare just enough uh, health in the economy and the healthcare works fine this is not a resilient system right we have a tremendous number of weaknesses in india a massive shortage of infrastructure training capacity in the middle east a massive shortage of manpower no shortage of infrastructure no shortage of money no shortage of the will to do it and india has no shortage of manpower no doubt uh there are currently more indian nephrologists i'm not talking about indian origin i'm saying, I'm saying indian indian nephrologists practicing nephrology in the united states then there are nephrologists in india there are almost as many indian nurses working across the entire middle east as there are nurses in india so india has become the de facto manpower supplier to the rest of the world and nothing wrong with that i think there is a tremendous value to be given in the transfer of manpower and training and all the doctors my father included benefited from the sheer amount of training that he received when he worked in england the only difference is he chose to go back whereas nine of his colleagues did not but those colleagues built up the national health system to what it is today and it is a shining light for uh, western europe in terms of how a very good socialized healthcare system works uh, but in india those who move back were able to provide 
our healthcare with the skills that it needs to get it off the ground, but we're still learning. So I would say that in the many avenues of collaboration that are talked about today, I would highly recommend we talk about manpower. And when I say manpower, I say manpower training in particular. Right now, the way it works is there is a completely different system that exists for training. And there's a completely different system that exists for recruitment. The government recruiters do not coordinate with the government department that is involved with training. And so the most common problem that every healthcare system in India faces is come recruitment time, 40% of our workforce will go missing, they will write the exam, and only 20% of those that left will come back to rejoin the services. Right? They will go look for other options or they'll get ports by other hospitals. And so this is a huge amount of churn and friction. Now, if there was a coordination between the two, uh, it would solve a lot of problems. Similarly, when it comes to recruiting in the Middle East, this is an aspiration for every Indian nurse to get recruited abroad because they improve their families back home. There's no comparing the kind of job uh, security that you get from earning a dollar revenue and the sheer amount of uplift that can happen for uh, families in rural India. And if you go across Kerala, you will see what this looks like, as most people have. But it is mismatched. It is concentrated entirely on one state when there are perfectly adequate girls who can work in any part of the country. So I would say a collaboration for manpower should look at all the way down to training institutions specifically for meeting the requirements of governments in India as well as across the world. So the two numbers match and doesn't at any point put stress on the Indian healthcare system. Now, obviously, I'm an interested party in saying that because I would very much like uh, our nurses from our groups not to get uh, ports from time to time. That is okay. Overall, a healthy country is built on the backs of healthy citizens and healthy citizens are built with a strong manpower uh, base. And we have absolutely no shortage of manpower. So I would say this is some of the easiest things that we can do. It just requires basic infrastructure. Mm. All the post work is online. All Don't the protocols are online. Camp. And there are enough and more doctors and hospitals available to train. If we work together and collaborate on training programs, I think we can solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you, Viren. Uh, that was very interesting and very timely because everyone talks about infrastructure everyone talks about the, the equipment but the people who are going to man the equipment people who are going to man the infrastructure are rarely focused on and there is a huge uh, gap as far as skills are concerned in the healthcare sector not just in india or in ua but across the world and particularly in the uh, nursing and in the paramedical section. So your group is contributing immensely in that and I hope that uh, uh, this will continue over a period of time. Uh, from the perspective of India, I think the numbers as have been mentioned earlier uh, that are required by India to reach the WHO st statistics or WHO figures recommended by them are massive. And I remember Dr. P.C. Reddy, well-known uh, cardiologist who set up the Apollo group of hospitals, mentioned in one of the gatherings, and he was right, that we need to double the doctors, we need to triple the nurses, and we have to quadruple the paramedics. And I'm glad that Narayan Ridale, under your father's tutelage, is continuing to provide a lot of health care For that, and thank you for pointing it out in today's session because it requires us to be going to be the foundation, the bedrock on which the structure of delivery of care is going to be built. Thank you very much. I'll move on to Mr. Tahir Shams, who is from the Zuleika Group of Hospitals. He's also a management professional who has uh, taken charge of the Zuleika Group of Healthcare Providers. They've also set up a hospital in India, the Alexis Hospital. And he's someone who has trained in marketing, finance, and information technology after doing his MBA from the University of Lincoln. Over to you, Mr. Tahir Shams. Could you unmute yourself, please? 
I'm sorry for that. Uh, thank you, Dr. Puri. Thank you, Your Excellency, Dr. Raman Puri, for uh, having me on this panel. There seems to be some echo. And I would like to also thank Indian Embassy and the consulate for this uh, invitation here. Uh, our journey actually started in the year of uh, 2016 with Alexis uh, Hospital. And uh, it was wonderful experience uh, going to uh, India and it was encouraged. Uh, our healthcare actually, you know, uh, launched in the year 2016 and was also encouraged and supported by World Bank. Uh, IFC has actually helped us, uh, you know, bringing, sorry. I think I've lost uh, the connection, I'm sorry. So our uh, investment in India is almost uh, 500 crores, uh, which is uh, launched in the year of uh, 2016. Uh, Nagpur needed a facility which was uh, a purpose built, and there was nothing in the radius of 300 kilometers of uh, Nagpur. So we came up with this facility which concentrated uh, on a uh, cancer center and the transplant, uh, a liver transplant and the kidney uh, transplant also. Um, our operations have actually progressed very well uh, in India with the help of uh, IFC and they have actually trained us uh, providing corporate governance, uh, making sure that our finances uh, are taken care of and uh, making sure that everything uh, is given, uh, I should say, on the platter so that, you know, um, our journey becomes it much easier. It comes on and after that it goes. See the green, can you see? Out of two minutes it goes off. Sorry, uh, am I with you all? Sorry. No, Dr. Shams, uh, Mr. Shams, you're okay. Your audio is fine. Your visuals are coming through. Please carry on. Yeah, and it was wonderful uh, in 19, uh, sorry, tw uh, in December 2019, uh, the UAE, UAE healthcare delegation has also visited. Uh, that is a very positive uh, move uh, in strengthening the cross-border uh, healthcare capabilities. And key areas of uh, collaboration included mental health, organ transplant, and, and so on. Uh, in our case, also, our critical care department continues to effectively manage uh, high-risk cases in India and uh, our medical associations and corporate partners and residents of Nagpur uh, are also enjoying uh, the services provided by Alexis Hospital. So that's our, this is actually, this would be a classic example uh, when we talk about Alexis Hospital, uh, the UAE-India partnership and the cordial relationship which we enjoy, uh, thanks to MOH, DHA and UAE government for enabling this venture. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shams. Uh, that was uh, uh, informative. From the perspective of collaboration, it's good to know that the two countries have uh, brought together and the Dubai Health Authority and the support that you have received at the Indian end has benefited a lot, large number of patients. The uh, Bay Group, with which I'm very familiar because I've visited one of their centers in Ajman, uh, is uh, Mr. Akbar Moedin Tumbe the Vice President of the Healthcare Division of the Thumbe Group. Uh, he is, like Mr. Viran Shetty, an engineer by training. And as one of the best medical tourism hospitals in the UAE region by New York Economy in UK in uh, 2013. And he has received the prestigious champion of Change Award at the 7th Annual MENA HR Excellence Award in 2015. So over to you, Mr. Akbar Tumbe, for your take 
and your uh, understanding of how this relationship thank you dr puri uh, for the kind introduction and uh, it was a pleasure having you at our campus at ajman a uh, few few years back um at the outset i'd like to say uh, thank you your excellency dr aman puri for inviting me for to speak at this uh, uae uh, india collaboration healthcare collaboration uh, talk um, just a quick introduction about the group uh, the tumbe group has been instrumental in medical education and uh, healthcare in the uae from the year 1998 uh, in fact my father founded the first and the only private medical university in the entire gcc region uh the university is uh, 23 years old today and uh, we accept students from a wide range of nationalities uh, this year we have 88 nationalities of students who study with us um and uh, indirectly we are contributing to these 88 countries to their healthcare uh, uh, manpower requirements at the outset the university also trains almost 30% of the ua national work for healthcare workforce um and the hospitals are used as uh, of course uh, you know um, treating facilities but also training facilities for the students and uh, research facilities for our research activities at the university uh, we run a chain of eight hospitals across the ua and uh, one hospital in india in hyderabad um in terms of uh, hospitals again as i mentioned earlier we are the only private teaching hospitals in the ua we uh, we train students at the undergraduate level at the postgraduate level and uh, soon we are also starting our phd programs in collaboration with the paris sud university which is the number one uh, university in europe um and this elevates us to a level of international universities conducting the full range uh, of phd to undergraduate educating programs the hospitals are large hospitals generally our largest hospital which we, which which we run currently is the medicity hospital which comprises of multiple hospitals in one single campus um catering and it's it's a brand new facility in fact we started operating back in november um with a capacity of 500 beds uh, and a separate rehabilitation hospital and a dental hospital within the campus uh, we're also getting into oncology uh, and other areas i would say like uh, mentioned in various uh, other of these uh, uh, of the speakers the pandemic brought a light onto healthcare uh, you know we were we were the focus during the entire pandemic pandemic and we continue to be so and we played an important role and for this i would like to say that the uae government acted very quickly in in adapting policies and changes which were crucial during that period uh, where we were able to control the pan- control the spread of the virus and at the same time be able to treat the virus uh, aggressively um, and we contributed personally as tumbe group we contributed in terms of hospital so one of our hospitals was dedicated uh, to dha as a covid uh, 19 treatment facility our hospital in ajman was also converted into a covid facility because uh, the government um, you know in ajman wanted us to uh, treat patients because the other hospitals were overflowing and our technologies were tested to to its limits uh, whereas initially we were trying to promote telemedicine in a big way uh, telemedicine suddenly became a necessity our doctors uh, were using it to treat patients um, you know uh, who were at home uh, we, we we also started using our remote telemedicine facilities to monitor patients uh, from their homes um, so i would say uh, healthcare being a focus our cap- capabilities also were tested to the maximum 
thing about uh, us being in the forefront of the COVID fight, uh, you know, also enabled us to pass on information quickly to in, to our Indian hospital, which had a little bit of time because India, um, the peak of the COVID situation happened almost two months after UAE hit its peak, which means that our doctors were already geared up um, in terms of what we were doing in our Dubai hospitals and Ajman hospitals in terms of treatment of COVID patients. And this helped us immediately transfer this information and uh, help them, you know, prepare a little bit better for the COVID for the pandemic. Um, at the same time, prior to the pandemic, we were learning uh, a lot from the our Indian hospital. Uh, India, when we entered India in 2015, what we realized was India has a lot of, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, volumes, there was no shortage of volumes. Uh, there was no shortage of uh, trained and skilled manpower, but there was a shortage of good infrastructure and uh, high quality, let's say, equipments that were being used in UAE to treat patients, which was not available in India. And that's that's the niche that we thought that, you know, we wanted to build high quality, high infrastructure in India in a place like Hyderabad, which is already, I mean, which has a lot of hospitals, but we wanted to differentiate ourselves and show us, show a little bit of the high quality of care that UAE has to offer to the Indian population. And at the same time, uh, we learned a lot. We, we at the same time learned about uh, treatments that were not being done over here. So we were able to learn from the Indian hospital. Uh, we, we were also able to uh, have some of our patients who were, who could be treated in India at a much affordable, much more affordable cost, but at the same time maintaining the high quality of standards that we, they were used to in UAE. Um, and and uh, the system worked very well. The integration uh, where a patient was seen over here, but seamlessly almost transferred to India um, for their surgery. These were the things that we learned, uh, you know, and we were we are continuing to develop uh, this hospital. Also, the hospital again became a training and teaching hospital for our students from the UAE who were ne never who would have never been able to see tropical diseases. Uh, for example, they were suddenly exposed to tropical diseases, and many of these students, uh, especially American students, and you know, you had Italian students who opted to go to India instead of are uh, other 60 collaborating hospitals across the world. So this uh, this is a, you know, a very uh, new learning experience that we brought into our India collaboration. We continue to look at India in terms of investment um, opportunities. Um, again, we're looking at niche um, areas where we can invest in, where we can make a difference. Uh, we, we just do not want to open another hospital. India has a large number of hospitals. We want to open facilities that can make and create a difference in the place that we operate. Having said that, uh, I'd like to say that, you know, we are committed to progress healthcare. We're committed to uh, both India and the UAE um, and the places that we would like to operate in to advance healthcare, to advance uh, teaching in healthcare and to advance research capabilities. We were the first uh, in UAE to start researching on COVID patients. Uh, um, and our research continues to basically, we continue to publish papers across uh, the world in terms of the learnings that we've had on COVID. So, as I mentioned to you, we're committed to driving healthcare. We are committed to collaborating in all areas um, of healthcare. Um, and uh, thank you again for this opportunity to speak at this conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that the years so that you are to collaborate. You are already collaborating. Very important point that because of the time gap between when UAE had COVID and when you saw COVID, you were able to transfer some of your learnings. And I think this is the kind of a transference of knowledge from one to the other that will help the world get rid of this pandemic. Thank you very much for your opinion, for your uh, collaborations, and uh, hopefully that you will continue to flourish. Uh, we will see to it that these, this collaboration does not die off.
Thank you. Uh, now we move on to an area uh, which has been one of the problematic areas, shall I say, and that is your insurance. In India, uh, we have the largest number of out-of-pocket expenses that a uh, healthcare uh, sufferer has to cater for. So most of the bankruptcies in India occur because you have to pay out of pocket because the percentage of people who are insured are so less, particularly in the private space. Uh, group insurances, healthcare insurances by the government agencies are, of course, one of the great things that have happened. And a classic example is Ayushman Bharat, which is in a way related to the healthcare uh, insurance world. From the perspective of uh, collaboration, I think it's very important that some kind of an international portability be built into. And I'm sure that uh, Mr. Arun Srivastava, our next speaker, who's the CEO of the Dubai region of New India Assurance Company, which is a part of the GIC group of companies in India, will throw some light on it. He's a commerce graduate who is also a fellow from the uh, Institute of uh, uh, Insurance, which is in Pune these days. And uh, I happen to have the good fortune of uh, spending three days there trying to learn a little bit about health insurance. And it's a fantastic institution to learn insurance in. And he has 32 years of experience of insurance and reinsurance. And therefore, it will be very interesting to listen to you, sir. Over to you, Arun. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak on the role of insurance in the furtherance of the Indo and UAE Health <coughs> Care Partnership. Frankly speaking, the health care, health insurance has become a very integral part of the health care ecosystem and we can't think about health healthcare system without considering the health insurance into it. Uh, in fact, if we uh, see the insurance, health, especially health insurance has done a wonderful job during this COVID period and has played a very significant and vital role in handling with the COVID-19 situations. Somehow they could not get the kind of recognition and uh, appreciation which they deserve for handling this COVID situation. In spite of all lockdown situations and uh, uh, work from home conditions, we tried to supply our services to the insuring public as well as to the healthcare provider uninterrupted during this difficult time by in terms of uh, giving uh, claim approvals, giving approval for the cashless facilities and providing liquidity by way of uh, paying prompt promptly the claims. As we know that uh, government of India as well as government of UAE both are trying hard to to focus on the providing healthcare services to the population and this is being done in two ways one is to create the healthcare facilities by way of public private partnership and the second is to provide them the empowerment to purchase these kind of facilities in terms of providing them promoting the coverage under healthcare insurance policies so if we take the example of uh, uh, UAE, two of its Emirates, uh, Abu Dhabi and Dubai have made the health insurance mandatory and thereby the health sector growth has been very good in uh, last decade. And the remaining five Emirates also are considering to make the health insurance mandatory and I think once that decision is taken, this health insurance and health sector both are bound to rise in uh, UAE. Similarly, in India, as Dr. Ranuttam Puri was uh, describing that there is a problem of uh, health insurance as far as the OPD patients are concerned. And the coverage of the population in terms of number is concerned. Most of the population, in spite of all efforts by the government, is still not covered. However, the government on their part, they are trying to provide the insurance coverage, especially to the poor and uh, to the underprivileged population 
and Ayushman Bharat is one of these initiatives. I think these initiatives will provide the affordability to the uh, insuring public to use these healthcare facilities, which by the way are very expensive. As we were talking about the portability of the policy, actually in uh, UAE, whatever health insurance policies we are issuing, that covers the treatment taken in India or elsewhere in uh, across the globe. But unfortunately, the policies which we issue in India, that does not cover the treatment taken outside India. And therefore, there is a problem of the reciprocity in uh, the policy. I think when we are coming together, healthcare systems are joining hands in India and uh, UAE, there will be policies in India also which will cover the uh, treatment outside India and especially in UAE. So uh, in future, we may see the emergence of uh, telemedicine and uh, by that telemedicine that health insurance can come closer to the healthcare sector and uh, the OPDs uh, and uh, hospitalization both will be utilized uh, in both the countries. And uh, I think that uh, healthcare sector and uh, health uh, insurance will go together in future also. And thank I thank you, so you for having me on this panel. Thank you so much. Uh, that's very interesting. No, this problem of, of uh, international portability uh, in a very easy, transportable manner. I think the medical tourism part is bound to suffer. And uh, I think from the perspective of uh, India, receiving some of the high-end care uh, patients from the UAE and the rest of the world, it is important to have an international insurance portability that uh, can be encouraged. And now that we have a strategic partnership with UAE, uh, this is one area perhaps the Consul General will be able to help the Indian healthcare industry in getting better support and coverage. Because of the international portability, it will become easier. And these days, it's very difficult to carry cash around. And there are certain limitations in foreign exchange uh, uh, amounts that can be carried. From the perspective of uh, uh, this particular session, uh, at the conclusion, I'm going to ask Dr. Dinesh Madhavan, who is the group oncology and international head of the Apollo group, to make his comments. Uh, if time permits, we'll have about five to seven minutes of question and answers. So those of you who wish to ask a question, please let us know. And uh, we will try to ask that from the perspective, uh, from the uh, individual that you want to identify that question to be answered from, subject to time. In case, uh, just, just to let you know that in case uh, we don't have the time, could you write to us an email at mvt at the date of uh, fiki.com? And we'll try to get in touch with the panelists here and re request the panelists to give an answer, which we will transport back to you on mail. So, Dr. Dinesh Madhavan. Thanks, Dr. Narendra Puri. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Aman Puri, Consul General, and uh, fellow August panelists. Uh, I've been hearing the session and I had some technical glitch, so my apologies if you saw me going in and out. Uh, heard various uh, inputs based on what could be done back in UAE and what we've done in India, be it from a service delivery or from a tech or from insurance. And the learning from that, based on the various pandemics we've seen in history is, we are better positioned today to leverage technology and the collegium of practice which could be done. Be it on the clinical front or on the management front. And this our learning from managing some COVID centers back at UAE and some in Sub-Saharan Africa. So I'm just giving two destinations where there is access to healthcare and access to infra and to some parts of the world where both these are very lacking, but Apollo has stood forth 
and ensured that we provided what is needed in these challenging times. And what's been the learning out of that is very important to understand. While I heard Mr. Arun Kumar Srivats are talking about insurance, one of the most important things we need to keep ourselves abreast on what is UAE moving on to. UAE is actually moving on to outcome-based payer category, which is going to change the way the healthcare domain is going to be practiced in that part of the world, which is challenged on two fronts. One is on expertise, the other one is infra, it tech or otherwise. And what could India give to that for, for a region which has got probably two, three robotic units to a country which has got about 92 robotic units? Is if we have gone through that curve, can we learn, we can, can we make the learning curve for people back in UAE much shorter than steeper and actually figure out what could India do in the entire technical or expertise leveraging program? The second thing is digital. So uh, there are a set of protocols and, and policies which have been determined by Indian organizations as we face up this challenge in the second most populated part of the world. And have we been able to effectively control, maybe in some parts of the world, in some states or in some hospitals better than others? Can that be a reference point to be passed on to the Council General or through this forum to see that learning could be leveraged across groups in India and also in UAE? That there's no point having a learning exercise which is sitting in silos somewhere and if we can't leverage the same, that's one. While I spoke about what we could do as training, the third thing is how do we get this to a central platform and a cloud with the taste of tech and actually also sitting and doing a distant monitoring, be it a tele-ICU or be it a telepath or be it tele-central physics if you're actually radiating a patient during COVID times or be it actually imaging protocols where you really don't need intervention. Can these be a few things that we could uh, partner with, create a collegium based opportunity because end of the day, the world will move on to outcome-based payer, be it India or in the UAE. And that's what's going to make difference because that puts the patient in the epicenter of the entire program. And that makes a huge difference than we traditionally looking at, you know, what is actually outcome-based programs that we could learn. It, it may not necessarily just be service levels or the number of A-laws, or the you know uh, the turnaround time, but largely is disease free and disease control over a period of year. That's when really you want to put the outcome to measure to the best. And I'm sure in this forum, with the number of institutions on board, I see Virin there who's from NH, and there's Mr. Akbar Mohidin who's from the Tumbe Group, and Mr. Tyre. We could have an exchange to see how do we leverage this and create the best. And it could be a learning even for us at Apollo from another group, and likewise another institution from Apollo, and we could look. But how do we cross pollinate thoughts between us to leapfrog the optimal? And these are my thoughts. And today, I believe with the advent of technology and digitalization, this could be done on a common platform and we could have an exchange of ideas. And I leave these thoughts because to me, the world is going to move on to what is value based for the customer, which is purely going to be medical outcome. It has been, but I would see it much more clearer and much closer than it was before. And uh, that, that's it for me. I'm more than happy to share some thoughts and some frameworks we have created to ensure we, that we have done this probably at a learning curve, not too optimal, but far better than what we were probably a year back. Thank you. Dr. Narotam, I believe you're on mute. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you so much. So kind of you to give your perspective on the issue. My bosses at Fiki have just told me that uh, uh, we have all run out of time. So I guess there is no time for uh, a Q&A. Uh, so it's my duty and privilege to participation in this. Excellency, uh, thank you again, sir, for uh, organizing such an important uh, gathering of healthcare experts. Uh, I'm quite sure that by the end of the day, you would be uh, in a better position to leverage the uh, relationship with, uh, between the two countries to a new level in the healthcare field because of the inputs that uh, you would have received. Uh, as far as the COVID pandemic is concerned, I'm a great believer that uh, it takes courage to believe that the best is, best is yet to come. And as uh, Leo Tolstoy said, that the strongest of all warriors are two, time and patience. I guess all of us have to wait for time uh, and patience and believe.
very strongly that the best is yet to come. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, your participation. On behalf of Vicky, I would be extending uh, a namaste and thank you to all of you for your inputs. Uh, grateful thanks once again. That's the end from uh, panel two. On behalf of all the panelists, over to you back uh, at the Fiki office, Praveen Mittal.